2022 has been a challenging year economically for farming as a whole. DEFRA released a price index, which up until October 2022 was running at just over 28%. If we look at the consumer price index, which is probably running at about uh, 10 to 11%, the costs are really being driven by concentrate feeds, fuel and fertilizer prices. These unprecedented price rises that we've seen are really starting to impact agriculture. Farming has not really had the opportunity to adjust. We're seeing the beef price has increased slowly throughout this year. It's, these price in, increases aren't really sufficient to cover the, the cost increases that we're seeing. 2022, we saw a drought. And again, we haven't seen drought levels like that uh, in around 26 years. There were certain areas of the UK that experienced probably 50% reduced rainfall in August. So this all has an impact on our ability to, to grow grass. You know, and ultimately, this is what we're trying to do throughout the summer months, is we're feeding livestock outside so they're grazing. We're also producing silage and hay for winter feeds. This is all having an impact on cost of production. I think we can all agree that we're starting to see weather patterns that we don't normally see and whether this is extreme temperatures, whether this is drought periods and obviously what we're trying to do with a regenerative system is be more resilient. You know, so the system is helping us, you know, when we have rainfall, it's about holding that rainfall in our soils and on our, on our land. It's about growing more grass. It's about making our system more resilient, resilience of economics as well as our productivity on farm. So one of the really interesting things that we've been able to observe over the three years of our AMP transition is how the pastures have evolved, or particularly the biodiversity and, and range of plant species in our pastures. So in terms of biodiversity and wildlife, it's been quite an exciting year. We've seen that our dung beetle populations have really bounced back. So that's two years after our sheep left and three years into our AMP transition. We've also seen a big increase in barn owl numbers and not just the numbers, but the health and condition of the owlets when they've been ringed in the summer. All of these things are great indicators that the system is working for wildlife and environment. And if we're providing the food and habitat for all the small little insects and bugs and the birds and everything else above it all slots into place. So we talk a lot around our AMP project about how it's meant to have high resilience to droughts and other weather conditions, which was, we're finding we have to deal with more and more every year. This year where we didn't really have a drop of rain from the first weekend of June to the second weekend of September, we didn't really have to change our grazing plan too much. We still managed to leave 50% of the grass behind over the summer, which meant that when you dug down beneath the top layer of the topsoil, you got down an inch or so, it was actually still a little bit moist. So our grass did keep growing, albeit slowly. So when we did get that rain, our long tall pastures held onto the moisture and it caused our pastures to bounce back very quickly. And they were long and tall and luscious green by the end of September. You wouldn't really have known we'd gone through that three, three, four month dry period. And because of that, we've not been impacted financially, really in terms of how the farms performed this year, despite really having that difficult period over the summer with the drought. Generally, the system stood up really well to that extended drought period. There were certainly a few challenges that came up. One of those was we experienced high rates of lameness in the cattle. We very rarely get a case, if any at all, in a year, and we probably had half a dozen this year. I think it was just because it was so dry and the ground harder than it ever has been. Again, because of the heat and the, the tempting nature of wooded areas and hedgerows that have been fenced off. The cattle definitely put more pressure on some of our more old and redundant fence lines and we had cattle escaping out of fields more than we have done. So some of the solutions that we've identified in hindsight to those challenges, we kind of already knew about those because a lot of our planning around this regenerative system is increasing tree planting in our countryside stewardship and encouraging natural regeneration of trees and scrub to come up in our pastures to try and create those little microclimates to influence our ecosystem processes and to create more shade. Companies, government, National Farmers Union have all made commitments around reducing carbon. I think this has really demonstrated a, an interest in regenerative agriculture because I think Regen Ag is potentially a delivery vehicle for helping hit those, those carbon targets. I think yeah, we need to think of Regen a little bit more broader than that because of the benefits you know, that it can potentially bring, bring to a farming system. We need to ensure that 
there's enough financial support to help farmers make that transition. None of this is easy. You know, you need to be able to talk to other people that are doing that. And this is what the supply chain can do, is it can help in regards to training, connect you with like-minded people. And together, you know, there's a great opportunity for the supply chain to, to really sort of roll out regenerative agriculture across UK farming. So projections for the AMP project in 2023, we're really going to try and push the cattle numbers even more. It'll also be our final year for our data set collection around the AMP project metrics based on the three E's, which is environment, ethics and economics. Some examples of those would be biodiversity surveys, kind of cattle production like finishing times and our fertility and calving success rates. And after that, we'll be able to really analyse the four years worth of data and put it into the final report. Mm -hmm.